was Jeffrey Dahmer a Christian? It's kind of a little bit of a trick question here because he certainly was not a Christian while he was committing these murders, although some people might have thought that he was. I'm going to tell you more about that as we get into this study. Um, but the trick question is here, um, really it's about after he committed the murders and he was in prison, uh, he made a profession of faith in Jesus Christ, and we're going to examine that today. Uh, this really, this study is not going to be so much about Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, it's going to be more a study of um, what are the qualifications for somebody to get genuinely saved, genuinely born again, according to the King James Bible. We're going to look about that today in this study. And the evidence I'm going to show you, number one, we're going to look at some video evidence, uh, mainstream media type of stuff. Uh, first part, some of the documentary stuff on, on Dahmer, and we're not going to get into a whole lot of his personal stuff. I'll say something about that in a minute here. But then the second part of it is, if you want to determine whether his conversion was genuine, okay, let's look at his public profession of faith. We'll do that first through video proof. And the second part is going to be uh, the pastor, the man that actually counseled Jeff Dahmer after his conversion. So this is the book about that, written by this guy. I read it, and we're going to be looking at this, doing a little bit of a review on this book. Very interesting insights into this whole thing. Now, if you are a younger viewer, you probably don't know who Jeff Dahmer was. Um, he's dead now. He's been dead for quite a few years. But it was back in the 1990s that it came out that this guy was basically, he was a sodomite. The modern word would be homosexual. I stick with the Bible term, sodomite. And uh, he was a sodomite, and basically he would kill his victims and dismember them and cut them up in pieces. And he had, when they called him, uh, he was basically drunk and he was trying to, he was going to kill a, another victim, a black guy. And uh, Jeff Dahmer was a white man. And I'll be putting pictures up here too. And um, basically this guy ran out onto the street and Jeff Dahmer had handcuffed him. And uh, he runs out onto the street and he sees a patrol car and he runs up to the patrol car and says, this guy's crazy, he's trying to kill me, he's really messed up. And the police came up to the apartment and went in and they found, they uncovered this horrible thing. There were severed heads in, the, in his refrigerator, freezer, I think. Um, he had a bucket of body parts, you know, and, and just, he was doing some real sick stuff, you know. I would only really even suggest getting into studying what all he did. It was it was very perverted, very 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 grotesque, horrible stuff. All right. Um, in case you don't know what Jeff Dahmer was, all total he killed seventeen young men, young sodomites and things, um, and you know eating parts of them and preserving other parts and things. He wanted to make an altar of their bones. Um, yeah, he was a very 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 wicked man. Okay. Now here's the whole thing. Here's where the study, what this whole thing is about. All right. There's going to be two different types of people, two different types of responses, I should say it that way, to this question, was Jeffrey Dahmer a Christian? After, you know, getting caught, going to prison, and he gets saved in prison, was he a Christian? Now, the one group of people is going to say, absolutely not, no way. If he was a Christian, if he was saved, then I don't want to go to heaven where he's at. You see, I don't, no way, he couldn't have been saved. What's their problem? Anybody that responds that way is counting on their own self-righteousness to get them to heaven. And see, if you're counting on your own good works to get you to heaven, then it certainly would seem absolutely just no way that this wicked man could have been saved. There's no way he's going to be in heaven. See, he couldn't possibly be good enough. See, most people believe in the two scales. You know, they believe that there's this scale, and if your if your good works outweigh your bad works, then you get in. That doesn't work. All right, that is false salvation. That's what Roman Catholics believe. That's what Jehovah's Witnesses believe. Mormons, any of them, professing themselves to be Christian, they all believe in that. They all believe that they themselves are working their way to heaven. They'll add a little bit of Jesus in through the Eucharist or through good works, going door to door, whatever else. But it all comes back to themselves. So those people are going to be found out very quickly. You'll see them in the comments. 
this is absurd, this is ridiculous. If Jeff Dahmer is a Christian, then I don't want to be. You see, the second group are those of us that believe the King James Bible. And we can turn in our Bibles. I go to this passage a lot of times when I'm dealing with lost people because this is the very, very important thing that you need to understand from Scripture. Mark chapter 2, verse 17 when Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Was Jeff Dahmer sick? Yeah, he did some real sick things. I believe that he was possessed with devils to be able to do the kind of stuff that he did. I mean, very, very, very dark, twisted stuff that the guy did. He was sick. What's the qualification to be saved? I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Was Jeff Dahmer righteous? Absolutely not. Was he a sinner? Yep. But the question is, did he repent? Was there godly sorrow that worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of? Was that there? You see, there's a lot of there's a lot of prisoners that all you know. Oh, I'm in jail and uh, things aren't looking too good, and they'll get a religious conversion experience, hoping to get out of prison. And I thought to myself, okay, the video evidence looks pretty good for Dom being saved, but what was the real motivation? I mean, again, can we accept into our numbers some guy like this who just says, I'm a Christian. I'm a professing Christian. I'm going to spoil the surprise a little bit. He went to church while he was doing this stuff. Some of it. I mean, you know, he had killed a guy back when he was like 17 years old, you know, right after he graduated from high school. You know, he was into some perverted stuff. And while he was going to church, he was doing some of this stuff, starting to kill and things like that, and certainly doing sodomy. Hmm. Kind of makes you wonder about people that go to church. No such scripture telling you to go to church. I get that thing all to me all the time. You don't go to church anywhere. You tell people not to go to church. Yeah, well, the Bible says that. The Bible does not anywhere say go to church. You're in church all the time if you're saved. All right? And again, I got to say that thing. I have seen this thing time and time and time again. I've gone to church buildings for years and years. I've preached in the pulpits. I was part of the system. I was a loyal, faithful, there every time the doors are open. The whole thing, Baptist, Independent Bible, Methodist, uh, I don't think if there's any others. I was in that system. So don't talk to me like, oh, you're just too lazy. Uh-uh. No, no, no. I was a faithful churchgoer for a long time. And I've seen this thing just like this Jekyll and Hyde thing with people. You get the, the oh, good, faithful church member. And, oh, hello. how Welcome to stuff like this. And all of a sudden they're gone and you go, well, what happened? And then you hear, oh, he actually just left his wife or something like this. Oh, or this guy here, they just caught him. He just, he killed the last two wives. And I'm not joking. I've heard this stuff. You know, murdering, adultering, drunkenness, drug addiction, all kinds of pornography addiction, child molestation, all kinds of things go on in these church buildings. Why? Because you put on your special little Sunday best outfit and you... Uh, it's, the, it's the perfect cover for Satanists. The absolute perfect cover for people that are involved in all kinds of sex perversion. Because who would have ever thought it? He's a faithful church member. You study some of the lives of these serial killers, a lot of them were faithful church members. A lot of them. It's a great place to go. Why do you think there's so many children being raped by the Catholic priests? Nobody suspects old father so-and-so. He's a great man of God. I'll tell you what, you better be careful of that stuff. But now we're going to get into some of the uh, video evidence here. I'm going to show you this uh, Stone Phillips interview with Jeff Dahmer and his dad sitting there. And I'm going to play the whole thing through and then I'm going to, not the whole big video it's like an hour and a half or something i think and um but i'm going to just play the part where he you know makes his profession of faith in jesus christ and uh very interesting we're going to make some comments about it here after it's done but let's just watch this your dad has wondered about all kinds of things from the medication that your mom was on during her pregnancy 
to the fact that you were exposed to violent arguments in the home from an early age and continuing to the possibility that he might have passed on some genetic propensity for obsession or violent behavior. Does any of that ring true to you? I, I can see why he'd wonder about those things, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're all excuses because I didn't feel accountable to anybody. I didn't feel that I had to, to uh, face what I had done ever. And uh, so you, you have, there comes a point where a person has to has to be accountable for what he's done. Can't go, can't go around making excuses, uh, blaming other people or other things. So I, I alone am the one who's responsible for what's happened. Let me ask, when did you first feel that, that everyone is accountable for their actions? Well, thanks to you for, for sending uh, that uh, creation science uh, material. Because I always, I always believe the, uh, the lie that uh, evolution is truth, the theory of evolution is truth, that we all just came from uh, the slime and uh, when, we, when we died, you know, that was it. There was nothing. So it, the whole theory cheapens life and uh, started reading books about how, that show how evolution is, is just a complete lie. There's, there's no... There's no basis in science to uh, to uphold it, and I've come to since come to believe that uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ is the true creator of uh, the heavens and the earth. It just didn't just happen, and uh, I have accepted Him as my Lord and Savior, and I believe that I, as long as well as everyone else, will be accountable to Him. Growing up, did you feel that you were accountable to your dad or to your mom? as the authority yes, figure I in the house? Yes, I did. I mean, they, they didn't let me uh, run wild. They were, they disciplined me. And uh, so I felt accountable to them. But afterwards, after I left the home, that's, that's when I uh, started wanting to uh, sort of create my own little world where I could be the one who had the complete control, where I didn't have to... Uh, about anyone else's demands and uh, I just took it way too far. Lionel? At that period of time I had drifted away from a belief in a supreme being and I never as a result passed along the feeling that we are all accountable in the end. He owns us and that basic concept is very fundamental to all of us. You feel that the absence, at least for a while, of a strong religious faith and yes, belief for some years may have prevented you from instilling some of that in Jeff. That's right. Is that how you feel? Yes, I think I had a big, uh, big part to do to do with it. I mean, uh, if you don't, if a person doesn't think that there there is a God to be accountable to, then then what's, what's the point of, of trying to uh, modify your behavior to keep it within acceptable ranges? Uh, that's how I thought anyway. And uh, I've since come to believe that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is truly God, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're the only true God. There you have it. Isn't that something? Uh, now... If you heard anybody else say that, would you say that they're saved? Pretty convincing. But you see, oh, it's Jeff Dahmer, so it can't be true. He can't be a Christian. Well, we're going to look at more evidence uh, that I believe proves conclusively that, yes, he did get saved. But let's look at the different things here that he brought up, five different things. Number one, personal accountability for sin. He knew he was a sinner. He understood that he is going to be accountable. He's going to stand before God, and he's guilty before God personal accountability for sin. Self-righteous people never get to that point. Unless it's just a general basic, oh yes, well, all have sinned. Yeah, I get that. We're all sinners, blah, blah. What about your sins? Well, who are you to bring up my sins? Oh, I'm not that bad of a person. I've dealt with them just years and years and years and years and years. Dealt with people like that. Secondly, creation science. Understanding, hey, there is a God. Right? That is the truth. 
oh, well, we should find common ground with evolutionists. I'll never find common ground with evolutionists. If you believe in evolution, you are deceived by Satan. Evolution is a, the, one of the dumbest, most stupid things that has ever been created. Everything came from nothing accidentally at some undetermined time in the past. You're an idiot if you really believe that. I mean, give me a break. Evolution is a lie. Absolutely. Evolution is a total lie. And when you actually look at science without the, all the little you know, things with evolution stuff and the, the preconceived notions of evolution, because you've got to get rid of God, you, know, you approach nature by looking and saying, we have to find ways to get rid of God, so we have to deny that this was created. We have to say it evolved slowly over time. When you get rid of that stupid nonsense, uh, you know, you're going to come and you're going to say, okay, yeah, it had to have been created. There must be a God. There must, God must be real. All right? And again, let me just say this, uh, like what Dahmer said there. If evolution is true, let me ask you out there, if you're an atheist, I know you're self-righteous. Every atheist I've ever met is always self-righteous. Well, I'm not that bad a person. I'm not a sinner. These wicked people. But let me ask you a question for you evolutionists out there, you evolutionary atheistic morons out there. Let me ask you something. Oh, you're getting offended. Oh, and it incredible? It's funny, too, because evolutionists, you know, evolutionists, Evolutionistic atheists, let me get it out, they offend so quickly. They get so offended. And I've said to them numerous times, how does emotion fit into your uh, scientific beliefs? You know, I'm just a crazy religious crackpot to you people. But why are you getting so emotional? I call you a fool, I call you an idiot and a moron, and you get all of, of emotional. Well, how dare you? Oh. It's all about science, isn't it? But let me ask you something for the evolutionist out there, the atheist out there. Um, what was wrong with what Jeff Dahmer did from a purely scientific standpoint? What did he do wrong? If evolution is true, the strongest survive. He proved it. Jeff Dahmer proved evolution. I mean, he literally verified the evolutionary lie. He was stronger than his victims. The strongest survive. He has just eliminated weak people from the gene pool. There's nothing wrong with what Jeff Dahmer did if you believe in evolution. And that's why he did what he did. Because he believed the satanic lie of evolution. And it is satanic. It is completely satanic. It is Luciferian. Ye can be as God's knowing good and evil. Satan's original lie in the Garden of Eden. That's what every atheist believes. But number four... Jeff Dahmer confessed the Lord Jesus Christ, said he is his Lord and Savior. He made a public profession of faith. He did not deny Jesus Christ before men. He didn't say, well, I, I'm a Christian. What does that mean? Well, you know, I just I, I attend my local church or something like this, or I was confirmed, baptized and confirmed in the Catholic Church last week or something. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. He made a public profession of faith in Jesus Christ. You say, well, could he have been faking it? Well, sure. We're going to look at the evidence of that, though, later. But I found it interesting, too, there at the towards the end of the clip, he says that he believes that Jesus is totally God, or I, forget, I think it was totally God, and that he is the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hmm. That's what I believe. You say, well, you believe that they're all the same. No, no, I don't. But I believe that they're all in one. All in one body. It cracks me up. I see this all the time. You know, those, you know, these people that believe in this Catholic Trinity, this pagan Trinity of Jesus has a body, soul, and spirit. God has a body, soul, and spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a little dove that flies around. And he's got a body, soul, and spirit. And they're not connected. They're just, in essence, divine essence. They're connected in divine essence. Divine essence? Where's that at in Scripture? You know, <laughs> stupid nonsense. No, it's body, soul, and spirit. Three in one. First John five seven. These you know little Catholic Trinitarians will come along and they'll go, First John five seven proves that we're right. You know, there's three gods and they're one. <laughs> no, there's one God. All right? Three in one. Again, I've proved that many times, but I just found it interesting that even Dahmer, you know, the Lord revealed that to him. But uh let's just uh Let's watch another video here. And um, 
Here you're going to actually see the fact that Jeff Dahmer was going to church uh, while he was doing some of this perverted stuff. Right? Let's watch this. Cleveland Hopkins Airport. And uh, he had a smile on his face. But as I got closer, it wasn't a smile of happiness. It was a smile of inebriation. Lionel tried for a year to help his alcoholic son to no avail. Jeff was sent to stay with his father's mother near Milwaukee. There, he seemed to find some stability at last, making a concentrated effort to turn his life around. He stopped drinking, went to church with his grandmother, and he fought what he believed were immoral homosexual urges, which eventually led to his inescapable fantasies about murder. Dahmer even found jobs, first at a blood bank, and then working nights as a chocolate mixer in a candy factory. But the lifestyle of church-going and right-living, as he called it, didn't last. After three quiet years in his grandmother's home, Jeff came face to face with his fears. At the library, a man handed him a note offering sexual favors. Dahmer declined, but he would later say the note was a turning point. It awakened sexual desires deep inside him. Specifically, he wanted the submissive company of another male. He wanted someone to fulfill his sexual needs, but he didn't want to be burdened by anyone else's needs. Better get a hold of this, okay? Very, very, very important because this is what the struggle is within the body of Christ. You'll see false converts and truly saved. False converts, what are they trying to do? They go to church and they do lots of nice things and everything else. Why? To try to turn their own life around. They try to serve God with their own flesh and, you know, in their own self-righteousness. And that's why you poke these people hard enough, you, you hit them hard enough with the sword of the Spirit, they'll run away. They can't handle it. And all of a sudden they'll start throwing around the same exact language as lost people say, who are you to judge me? They'll do the same thing as lost people. It's pretty incredible. But again, for those out there that believe in easy believism, was Jeff Dahmer saved? He was a professing Christian faithful church attendee, you know. Back when I was in Pennsylvania, there was a guy, Charlie Roberts, and uh, he went in and he uh, tried to rape a bunch of young Amish girls, ended up killing, I forget how many of them and things at this Amish school, and, and killed the teacher, I think that it was too, and then killed himself. Bloody, murderous, you know, killer. Faithful churchgoer. That's what I've been saying for years and years and years. Church buildings are an abomination. You know, there's nowhere in Scripture where you're told to build a building, call it a church, and invite the saved and lost to go to it. And all that happens is these people come into these buildings and they see all the nice little standards and they sing the hymns and they do, do nice little good service things for people and everything else. And they can go there and they can be just as lost as any drunken bum out on the street. But they can appear to be good people faithful attendees at their local church. You need to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Big difference there. But uh, we're going to take a break here for a minute or two, and um, I'm going to get the overhead camera set up and uh, get my laptop computer put away here, and I will be right back. All right, now we're going to do a review of the book here by this guy, Roy Ratcliffe. Let me show you here on the overhead camera. Here it is. There's his picture on the back. He is a Church of Christ pastor. And I have major issues with the Church of Christ. They teach a false uh, salvation where it is baptism that saves you. Uh, there's a whole lot of other issues with the Church of Christ. Um, bad situation. And so, you know, I approached this thing skeptically and I said, okay, you know, Jeff Dahmer's video looked a good profession of faith there, certainly. But uh, Church of Christ, I'm going, Ugh. but you know, new babe in Christ there, he's a, he's a young Christian. Young Christians make mistakes. I made plenty of them when I first got saved. Uh, I won't even tell you some of the stuff I used to believe after I first got saved. Pretty bad. But the Lord straightened me out pretty quickly on those things too. And the Lord will straighten out anybody who's genuinely saved. Um, you're going to come to the truth. 
Okay, that's what the Holy Spirit will do for you. But uh, we're going to get go through this book here, and I'm going to show you some of the things going on. And again, you have to look at this thing of, uh, this is what this guy's reporting that Jeff Dahmer said. And I've seen this thing with, with preachers. They'll, they'll kind of uh, doctor up the truth a little bit to kind of make themselves look a little bit more holy and whatever else. And I'm, I'm saying that for a reason. You're going to see why I said that here in, as we continue. Let me show you a little bit of this here. Okay. I have some stuff highlighted. I don't have any pages marked. Uh, zoom in here. Uh, here he hears that there's a minister. Robin just talked with a minister in Oklahoma active in prison work. Curtis Booth, who was in contact with a prisoner here in Wisconsin who wanted to be a, become a Christian. So what this Ratcliffe guy is hearing. So, page 21 here. Um, later, though, I learned that the prison minister in Oklahoma, Curtis Booth, who had contacted Rob McRae, was actually the first person from the Church of Christ to contact Jeffrey Dahmer. Booth sent him a Bible correspondence course and a Bible a week earlier than Mary Mott did. So these are Church of Christ people that are contacting Jeff Dahmer. Now that would be very, very bad if he hadn't had any other influences, but he did have other influences, which we'll get into. Um, here he gets into some of the false stuff that the Church of Christ teaches. He says, well, I used to think baptism was an op optional thing, but I've done some reading and studying on the subject, and I've realized that I need to have my sins washed away, like Paul did in Damascus. Uh, Acts 22, verse 16, Arise, be baptized, and wash away your sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. In the past, I picked up the idea from watching religious shows on television that baptism is not very important, Jeffrey said. Uh, it's not that it's not important, it's just not going to wash your sins away. The blood of Jesus Christ washes your sins away, which is the big contention thing between Church of Christ and those that are saved. Now, he said his views had changed. He had come to believe in the importance of baptism by studying books and pamphlets and the New Testament books of Mark, Acts and Romans. He believed he needed to be buried with Christ as Romans describes it. He wanted to be baptized like many were on the day of Pentecost as reported in Acts. Finally he said, I really want to be baptized. He believed in Jesus Christ and said he wanted to put him on in baptism, a common phrase in my Christian fellowship. Okay, again, you know, I read this, I underlined it, I'm like, okay, this doesn't look good. This might mean that Jeff Dahmer was a false convert. Because baptism does not wash away your sins. Baptism is important. I believe in baptism. But it is just simply, it's a symbolic thing where you, your old man is dead, buried with Jesus Christ, and you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Is it necessary for salvation? No, it's not necessary for salvation. All right. uh, early on in the book of Acts, again, people get this all mixed up. The day of Pentecost, you saw it there in the book. They'll, they'll go back to Acts chapter 2, verse 38. That's the plan of salvation. No, it's not. Acts is a transitioning book. You're transitioning from the gospel being presented to the Jews as a people to the point where now it's Jews and Gentiles. All right? A whole other study there, but, you know, the, the point is baptism does not wash away your sins. The blood of Jesus Christ does. But uh, this guy, this Ratcliffe guy, uses the NIV which you're going to see throughout this thing. Here he quotes on page 31. Regardless of all that, Paul said, but you were washed, you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Here again, this is why you don't use the new versions. The King James Bible says are. Okay? Not were. You are. Okay? Very important there. Um, it says there's religious background of the Church of Christ, he said. Okay, the, the church denomination that Dahmer was raised in was the Church of Christ. All right, which is kind of funny because it's like, you know, again, you know, the Church of Christ is very cultic where they are teaching their people that only the Church of Christ, only the Church of Christ, you know. Uh, they might say others are saved, but the Church of Christ has it right, you know. And so Dahmer, you know, I believe he got saved, and I'll show you the reason why later. But I believe he got saved and he doesn't know who else to talk to or whatever else. And he thinks, I guess, the Church of Christ. Again, a, a early mistake. You know, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. Um, when I got saved, 
uh, truly saved, not my church building profession thing that I did when I was a little boy in Sunday school. When I truly got saved, I went to a Baptist church, independent Baptist church. And I thought to myself, independent fundamental, IFB. Went to my, I thought to myself, well, if they're Baptist, they have to believe the King James Bible is God's word. That's what I've heard. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. Uh, you'll do some really dumb things. I mean, I just, I'll tell you another one. You're, some of you are really going to, this is really going to blow your minds. I, don't, I think I might have said this in other studies, but when I first got saved, you ready? I actually thought Catholics were saved. When I first got saved, okay, when I when I was, you know, when the Lord saved me, I had at that point in time I was thinking that Roman Catholics were saved. They just had some weird beliefs or whatever, <laughs> you know, and and see here's the whole thing. You'll do some real dumb things when you first get saved, and you'll say some stupid things, and you'll believe stupid things, but you know what? The Holy Spirit will come along and He'll teach you, and He'll you know. God's the gentle spirit of God is going to blow your mind as you're saved for a long time and you and all of a sudden you look back at your life as a Christian and you go I can't believe God put up with me some of the stuff I was saying some of the mistakes some of the things that came out of my mouth and you're going wow it's really bad God will be gentle with you when you first get saved and he will lead you he will gently guide you along and say no no Catholics aren't saved, Brian. You know, let me show you. You know, and there you go. You know, he convinced me over the years of study. But let's get back to this book here. He says, "When I stayed with my grandmother in Milwaukee, I went to church with her. In fact, I really tried to get into going to church, but it was never interesting to me. Most of what I know about religion I picked up from television. Not a very good teacher, and certainly going to the Church of Christ is not a very good teacher either." But again, for the easy believers and people out there, you know, Jeff would have professed to be a Christian at some point in time. Was he saved and doing all this stuff? Of course not. But who would have known? And how many other Jeff Dahmers are out there in these church buildings right now? I think it's probably an even more important question. Page number 51. He made a conscious decision to no longer resist his evil impulses, but to yield to them. After this, no God and no law could control him. He became a law unto himself. Again, this is what happened with Jeff Dahmer. And for the atheists out there, what did he do wrong? He didn't do a thing wrong, according to atheistic evolution. If there is no God, if, if we're just here by random chance, Dahmer did nothing wrong. You say, well, the morals of society, where'd they come from? Well, but, but we just have morals. Of people. Where did it come from? Do morals evolve? And wouldn't those morals of saying, don't kill weaker people, isn't that getting in the way of evolution? I mean, really, truly, if evolution is real and true, you kill to get ahead. And don't tell me that you don't. The strongest must survive for the species to continue. The strongest must survive. Dahmer was not a criminal if you believe in evolution. Genuinely believe in evolution. But you see, evolution is for self-righteous hypocrites. That's the whole purpose of evolution. That's the whole reason it was created in the first place. Get rid of God because you're not that bad of a person. And this, this idea of, of judgment is just so, uh, you know, yeah. Here we have page 53. Certainly, Jeffrey... Get to the next page here. Uh, Dahmer's efforts to control himself failed hideously. He needed something beyond himself, something more powerful than himself. Which is true. Absolutely true. Um, again, these people that try to control themselves. That's why there's so much of this, this horrible stuff that happens in these church buildings. So much hypocrisy among professing Christians. Yeah, they're trying to control themselves. They're trying to, to maintain a system of whatever and things like this. It's bad. That's why these Catholic priests fall all the time. Why? Because they're trying to control themselves and they can't do it without the Lord's help. They need to come broken as sinners. Not, well, I'm a good person. I'm Father so-and-so and I have a PhD and a THD and yeah, wicked. 
And this kind of quotes the uh, thing here, page 55. This quotes what he said there to in the interview. If a person doesn't think there, that there is a God to be accountable to, then what's the point of trying to modify your behavior to keep it within acceptable ranges? That's how I thought anyway. I always believe the theory of evolution is truth, that we all just came from the slime. When we died, you know, that was it. There is nothing, and I've since come to believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is truly God, and I believe that I, as well as everyone else, will be accountable to him. You know, uh, it was aired November 29th, 1994, the day after his death. It's ironic because I remember um, the year I graduated high school was 1994. So I was out of high school, and I remember driving to work that day, and I heard the story of Dahmer being killed in prison. Kind of strange to think back to that now. But uh, 58, page 58, change is required, a new way is needed. Okay? Yeah, right there. That's what salvation is all about. How could he turn to accept God? Or, or excuse me, who could he turn to accept God? Sorry. Trying to read the overhead camera thing here. Certainly no human would hear the cries of his heart and believe the depth of his sorrow. Only God could. Yeah. Okay. And that. And, and again, let me just say this. i got to kick the Catholic confessional. You can go and confess your sins to some dirty pervert priest out there. It doesn't mean anything. God is the only one that can forgive sins. All right. In spite of what the papists try to teach. Let's continue here. Page 59. But after Jeffrey's arrest, a veil was lifted. He began to see order and design in the universe. He began to see the case for God and to see Jesus as the only answer for the havoc he had wreaked in his life. He began to have hope for his ultimate fate. Is it possible that God could really love him, Jeffrey Dahmer? Could the salvation that Jesus offers be available to him too, despite his heinous acts? Did Jesus die for Jeffrey Dahmer too? He began to see that the issue was not what he thought about humanity or evolution, but uh, what he thought about God, he began to study the Bible. While in prison, Jeff received reams of unsolicited religious materials, here's the key, from well-meaning people. Okay? Now, here's the interesting thing. I'm just going to spoil the surprise. I believe this man, right there, I believe he's lost. Well, you talk about a flip. Jeff Dahmer, the serial killer, murdering cannibal, sodomite ends up in heaven and a church of christ pastor ends up in hell he's not a bible believing christian i'm going to show you the proof of that as we continue on here but he got insulted there the well-meaning people sent unsolicited material yeah it turns out that there were some things sent to him from the institute of creation research found that in some other uh, you know study that i was doing about Dahmer and, and everything else institute for creation research uh, where's the thing at here? Do I have it? Um, Dr. Henry Marsh is the guy. I have a the Defender Study Bible somewhere here. Unless I have it in my files someplace else. I thought I had it here. The whole point is, Dr. Henry Marsh, um, I have some issues with, with some of his stuff, but he believed the King James Bible and wrote about manuscript evidence for the King James Bible. And it was his materials that got Dahmer saved. And Dahmer is a baby Christian. Many baby Christians do, made the mistake of thinking, well, okay, I'm saved, and I guess the people in the Church of Christ are too. Big mistake. And their materials were what was leading him astray and getting him messed up. But the fact is, you're going to see here as we continue, Jeff Dahmer believed the King James Bible, and he was against the New Versions. And his salvation came before meeting this guy. Hmm. And you're going to see this attitude that this guy has against Bible-believing Christians. And the fact that he tries to turn Jeff away from being one, and Jeff doesn't do it. It's exciting. Let's continue. Uh, you know, then he talks about uh, down here, these Church of Christ people sent him things. The courses were produced by World Bible School, a Church of Christ ministry. The Course's strong evangelical message resonated with his need, and he studied and became convinced of the necessity of baptism in the salvation process. Ain't wrong. The Churches of Christ emphasize baptism as an act of faith. That's why they go to hell. But uh, 
Here's talking about um, the stuff that his son, or excuse me, his father sent to him. Remember in the in the interview, what did he say? He did not say when I talked to the Church of Christ pastor, you know, Pastor uh, Roy Ratcliffe, Cliff Rat. We were calling him my wife and I, but you know, we like little fun and names and stuff like that. We don't hate people. We just like to be sarcastic and have fun. But if you remember in the interview that we watched earlier, he says. Uh, you know, his dad looks at him and he goes, you know, when did you start to have a change of mind or whatever? And he says, when you sent me those creation materials. He's not talking about the Church of Christ stuff. He's talking about the stuff from the Institute of Creation Research, Henry Morris. That's what got him saved. The gospel was clearly presented, not this Church of Christ nonsense about you be baptized and join the church and things like that. Sounds like Catholicism to me, really. No connections there. I, I always head towards conspiracy. You know, it's such a problem. Page 61. He says here, I want to accept the Lord's salvation, but I don't know if the prison will allow me to be baptized. Well, he was already saved. He didn't need this baptism stuff. You know, the Church of Christ method to save him. All right, page 65. During this time, I would take Jeff's confession of faith in Jesus Christ... I knew that Jeff believed on Jesus as the Christ, the Son of God, but tradition dictated that I formally ask him. So he already had a profession of faith before being baptized. Did he understand that baptism serves to bring assurance that Christ's blood washes away sins? Would he appreciate the, this biblical truth? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have baptized many, many people who have not appreciated the fact that their sins were washed away. Okay, well, you're kind of contradicting yourself there. It's not the water that washes away sins. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's not, you know, baptism serves to bring assurance. No, it doesn't. This isn't what baptism is about. Baptism is about you dying to your old self and being resurrected as a new creature in Christ Jesus. Water didn't wash your sins away. The blood of Jesus Christ washed it away on the cross. If you think that you're going to get baptized, all you're going to do is get wet, right? You need to have faith in what Jesus Christ did on the cross to pay for your sins. Jeff, sit down for a few minutes, I said. This is probably obvious, but I need to be sure you understand that baptism has something to do with your sins. Do you understand uh, what baptism does to your sins? Oh yes, I know it washes away my sins. If anyone needed to have his sins washed away, it is me. In fact, I'm looking forward to it and counting on it. Okay? And again, I'm going... Mm, this is a bad thing. I'm reading through the book, I'm going, maybe he wasn't saved. But then I see later on, though, he was saved. He just was confused by this false prophet coming to him here. And, you know, and again, I see this thing. People say, well, false prophet means that they're making false prophecies about the future. Yeah, but, you know, I'm using it in the sense of somebody being a liar in terms of preaching and things, too. All right, continuing. Page 68. Um... You know, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God? He smiled as he gave his answer. Yes, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. In fact, I've said so lots of times in the various interviews I've given to the media, but each time when the report airs, that part is left out. I actually was trying to find a better definition video of the thing I played, and I found one. It was really high definition. And the woman cut out the part of his testimony. You know, I'm thinking, that's a little crooked. People just people can't stand the thought of thinking that some sinner, some wicked sinner like Dahmer, is going to be in heaven someday. They can't stand that thought because they're trusting in their own self-righteousness, you see. Page 69. Chaplain Burkham returned before we were to be escorted to the Whirlpool. If redemption is what you want, he said, you might consider what the Muslims do here in prison. They believe that by simply rubbing their hands against a rough surface like the wall of the prison, that they can gain redemption have you ever considered doing this instead? I was shocked to hear this. I looked at Jeff, and he looked at me with the same look of unbelief. How could a chaplain who claims to be a Christian suggest that we follow a Muslim custom for gaining redemption? Was he trying to stop this baptism before it could occur? I've never understood why he said this. Well, because he was a professional preacher. Paid chaplain. Fake. That's why. Page 71. 
Jeff, upon your confession of faith in Jesus as the Christ, the Son of God, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of your sins. Uh, no, your sins were, his sins were already forgiven when he put his faith in Jesus Christ. Baptism is only uh, symbolic of the fact that he is born again, become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Page 83. His reply was a comfort to me. No, I'm proud of you for telling the world that I believe in Jesus Christ. My main comp complaint with the media is that in every interview I speak of my faith, but when the interviews are aired, they cut that section out. I'm glad that you were able to tell the world that I am a believer. All right, uh, what was going on there is this cheap hireling here, you know, went and uh, baptized Dahmer, and then a member of his church, Radcliffe's church, was a, uh, she was from the media, and she was like, you know, let me know. We want to write a story about this thing. Why? Again, you know, I've had contact with people and they say, please keep my name private. Sure. Absolutely. But he did this and the total media blew up and everything else. And, and well, I didn't know that that was going to happen. Please. Please. <laughs> of course he knew. It's in all these interviews and things, and you'll see this this Radcliffe guy in documentaries. If you watch anything on Dahmer, you'll see him being interviewed and everything else. But he had no idea that that was going to happen. Yeah. But you know, again, the the only positive part of that is that you see that Dahmer wanted to be able to make sure that he's confessing Jesus Christ publicly. Again, the mark of true conversion, not the mark mark of false conversion. I mean, how many Church of Christ people I've met, known over the years, and uh, they certainly don't care about professing Jesus Christ openly. Page 85. Uh, baptism does not take away crimes. It addresses sins. No, it doesn't. The issue in baptism doesn't concern justice in the society. It concerns the forgiveness of God. Again, this is, this is a total lie here that he's saying. Okay, baptism does not take away your sins. Continuing, Jeff's crimes cry out for justice. People seethe with righteous indignation when they think of his horrible deeds. He needs to suffer for the crimes he committed. Hence, they believe hell is the proper place for Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, because they're self-righteous. No one understood this quite as well as Jeff. He understood that it was from the anger and wrath of God that he sought redemption. Baptism is about salvation and the redemption of the soul. Liar. That is not true. That is not what the Bible says. Okay, baptism is, a, is an action that you take. Right? It is man entering in his little works that he's done. It says here, I wanted to give him a simple faith in Jesus Christ and protect him from some of the arguments and controversies that have raged within my faith, but that was not to be. Jeffrey came from a life of almost unimaginable depravity to accept Jesus Christ. Why? Uh, why? Why? Maybe it's a misprint. Would he be concerned with the fine points of any religion? Uh, the fact is that Dahmer was not just, oh, I, I just, that's fine, I'm whatever. He wanted to study the Bible, and he did a lot of study. Pretty interesting stuff. Page 91, you were the first person to ever say publicly that I believe in Jesus, and I thank you for that, he said. Again, why is Dahmer so concerned about people knowing that he's professing to be saved? Why would he even care? I mean, if he was a false convert, he knew he wasn't getting out. He had gotten like 17 uh, life sentences in prison. Not going to get out of that, okay? Um, what was the point? He got saved. Wanted to make sure that he confessed Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Continuing here, page 92. Jeff started off with questions. He was absolutely full of questions. Genuine, 100% mark of a true conversion. I've seen that thing so many times. I saw it in my own life. When I first, you know, claimed to be a Christian, I had no questions. You know, I was being forced to go to church and, and all this stuff. And, you know, I had to be there all the time. I didn't even like going as a child. You know, and it got more and more so as I got older. By the time I was 17 years old, it was like, yeah, I got to work on Sunday. Dad and Mom, I can't be there. Oh, you shouldn't be working on Sunday. Yeah, I know, but, you know, they really need me this week and whatever and and I got to the point where I was just like, I'm not going back. I couldn't stand it. You think I had lots and lots of questions? I didn't. 
I did my religion thing when, you know, Christmas and Easter came around or whatever else or other special little events I'd go to church. Other than that, I could have cared less. Very clean living, you know, at least to most people, you know. Yeah, but you get saved and all of a sudden the questions start. I wonder what about the Bible version issue? I wonder about this thing of creation. So I wonder what the, what do Catholics believe anyhow? And I wonder about, and I wonder, that's the reason for this whole ministry. King James Video Ministry started out as a ministry defending the Word of God, the King James Bible, and I started getting questions from people. And it's like, well, okay, I can do a video on that, and here we are 1,200 videos later. You know, <laughs> people have questions when they get saved.